Hello and welcome to 7.E. This is Miss Fitzgerald. Miss Hagra. And Miss Angelo. What we'd like for you to do right now is press pause and do the warm up where it says graph y equals negative 2 times 3 to the x minus 1 plus 2. Pause. Okay, so we graph the base function first. Um, so that's everything without the shifts that were right 1 and up 2. So we did our key points, which were 0, comma, a and 1, comma, a times b. So negative 2 times 3. So I, in the dotted, you can see my two key points with the general shape of my function approaching my asymptote of y equals zero. And then I took my key points and shifted them up to right one. And then I also had to take my asymptote and shift that one up two as well. So I have my new asymptote drawn in with my final function and all of my key points are labeled on the axes with values. Good job, Ms. Hagra. Thank you. Okay, so now today we're going to be talking about, we said 7.E, E meaning the number E, and we have some vocabulary for the natural base E. Ms. Hygra, looks like you're writing something over there. Oh, is that, is E an irrational number? E is an irrational number, that's right. So fill in that blank. And it has the approximate value of 2.718, kind of like what we've seen before with Pi. Pi! Yep, very good. So, um, it's a number, E. Exponential functions with the natural base is in the form y equals a times e to the r x. And then what I sometimes like to do is put that e to the r in parentheses to remind myself that's your b. Your b is not just some number, it's e to the r. And then r is going to be your rate of growth. And we will know that if r is greater than zero, it'll be growth. And if r is less than zero, it's decay. Okay, so now why that is, we're going to tell you. Can I tell you? Can I tell you? Can I tell Please. you? Please. Thank you. It's because if r is greater than zero, it's a positive number. It's a positive exponent. So it's e to like four, five, six. B is big, like it was for the um, previous lesson. If it's less than zero, then that means it's a negative number. That means we would have like one over e or one over e squared. That's a fraction. And we know that fractions are decay if they're less than one. Ah, oh, excellent. Thank you. Okay, so we got um, we can either determine if it's exponential growth or decay, just like in the previous one. Um, in general, exponential growth goes up from left to right. So if a is bigger than zero and r is a positive number, we know it's exponential growth. And then we know it's exponential decay if a is bigger than zero and r is less than zero. So where it's going down from left to right, just like in the previous lesson. Love it. Excellent. Next slide. Okay, so the functions for these look just like they did with exponential growth and decay when we had a b. So in this case, instead of b, we have e to the r. So we have our a and our b to the x. And we have e to the minus r, where this is our a times b to the x. The key points are going to be identical, and the graphs are going to be identical with the same um, horizontal asymptotes. And you can see that our functions are approaching the asymptote, but it's never going to cross or touch the asymptote. So the key points we're going to be doing is 0, comma, a and 1, comma, a, b. Except instead of b, what do we have for this one? Um, so instead of this one, we have e to the r or e to the minus r. So for these specific examples, our b is going to be e to the r and e to the negative r. So these would be equivalent to 1, comma, a, e to the r or... 1 comma a e to the negative r. So depending on which one it is. But you can just think of that as your b, the part with the exponent of x. So when a is negative, we are going to have a reflection on the x-axis, just as we saw before. And when r is negative, we're going to have a reflection over the y-axis. I just had to say it. Hopefully that's good. Simple. Um, domain and range, what do you guys think? Well, I see that the graph is going to continue on forever in both directions. So it's going to go to the left, so to negative infinity, and to the right, it's going to go up and to the right. And I see the same thing for the other function. So I think that the domain is all real numbers. That's convenient because it's exactly like what we did for the previous lesson with exponential growth in the k months. Wonderful. But range looks different, doesn't it? It does look a little bit different because we have that asymptote. So this asymptote kind of breaks up the graph, so that I only see the graph above the asymptote. And if you did have a reflection, maybe it would be down here below, but it's only on one side of the asymptote. Mm -hmm. 
So here is where my asymptote is, my function is everywhere above it, but not including this asymptote. So the, the, the range is going to be y is greater than 0, and it's going to be bounded by your horizontal asymptote, which is the line going through y equals 0. And your range and your asymptote values will always be together um, the same. Okay, so we have our next one, and they want us to graph it, and they want us to like name the range and write the equation of the asymptote. Well, what we saw in the previous slide was just the parent function, mostly. Now we're going to look at one which shifts, and this is your general form. It's y equals a times e to the r, which is like your e, and then your exponent is x minus h plus k. And remember to switch the sign for the h, because that's your horizontal shift, k is to be vertical. Um, so instead of having 0 for your asymptotes, you're going to be looking at wherever the k is, whether it's shifted up or shifted down. So Ms. Hagra, as I'm talking, has been writing, and hope that you guys see that, it's 0.5e to the x, so the a in this case is like 0.5, the b is e, and then my a is 0.25. So now that's just going to kind of help us out with our key points. Now b being e is like 2.7. You don't need to calculate it for that. It's fine. Anything, you just need a baby calculator. Maybe, but we expect you to be able to do it by now. So your base function, y equals 0.5e to the x. Your key points, Ms. Bonte Ms. Angelo, are 0, 0, 0.5, and then 1, 0.5 times e, which, which is, is about, about 1.4. So we just do 0.5 times 2.7 to get 1.4. Okay, um, so we're going to go ahead and graph our base function first. So we know the general shape and we have our key point. So I'm going to do 0, 1 half and 1, 1.4. So since I have my y scale going in 1 halves here, um, I'm just going to go ahead and go by 1 half. Thank and we, we are going to have decimals here. And then I'm going to go over 1 and go up 1.4. So here's 1, here's 1.5, so 1.4 is about here. So that value, which I'm going to mark, is about one-half e. And I know I'm going to have my asymptote, and I'm going to have my general shape. I'm going to do a dotted line since this is my base function, and it's going to look like that. Okay, Ms. Angelo, what are our shifts today? It looks like our h is going to be a positive 2, because remember we have to switch the sign and k is going to be 1. So that tells me I'm going to go right 2 units and up 1. Okay, so I'm going to take my two dots and go right 2, and then I'm going to go up 1. But when I go up 1, I have to go up 1, which is two boxes. And then I'm going to take my other point and go right 2 and go up 1, which is two boxes. I also need to shift my asymptote. So my asymptote was at y equals 0, and I have to go right 2 and up 1, so when I go up 1, I have to go up here to y equals 1. So now I'm going to go ahead and connect my dots with a smooth curve. So I marked that my asymptote was over um, at 1, and I have my dot, and I see that it's 2. This was over at 1.5. And this other dot here is at 3, and then we have to plug in the y value as well. So the dot, the original dot was at 1.4, so when we add 1 to it, it goes up 1 to 2.4. So now we have to think about what our domain is. So I notice that I do have arrows going in both directions, so that tells me that it's going to be all real numbers. And I have my asymptote. Notice that we went up 1, that was our k, and now my asymptote is going to be at y equals 1, and all of my action is happening above the line, so that tells me that my range is y is greater than 1. Awesome. Thank you. Well, that was tons of fun. How about we try another one, y equals negative 3 e to the 0 0.5 x plus 2. So the base function for this one is going to be y equals negative 3 times e to the 0 0.5x. So I see what you did there with the parentheses to make sure that we can easily see where the b is. Um, and that makes our lives a little bit easier. So our key point 
star zero a so zero negative three and then one comma negative three times e to the point five well that is negative four point nine kind of quick with these numbers this high guy. I hope you can keep up. How'd you get those nine. numbers, Miss Fitz? I use a calculator. Awesome. Yes. Now, we can graph these because it's not super duper hard. Zero, three, and I feel like we can probably keep our scale at one since the numbers aren't crazy bad. Sounds good. <clears throat> Thank you. I thought so. So I'm going with zero, negative three, and then one, negative four point nine. So it's almost at five. And our asymptote would be at y equals zero. Good job, Miss Hydra. Thank you for writing for us. And she's labeling also. Appreciate that as well. So we have some shifts here. We do like to do our shifts in another color because it makes it a little bit easier. Now, based on the equation, I don't look. Doesn't look like I have an H. There's not one. You're circling it. There's not one there. So there's not a horizontal shift. But there is a vertical shift of two. So I'm going to go up two from each of those points. Up, one, two. Bam! Up, one, two. Bam! Good job. Thanks for following along with me. And we will also we can go ahead and shift our asymptote as well to help us graph it. So we went up two, and there's that asymptote. And now, watch her graph this wonderful curve. Smooth. Look at that. She's a pro. Thank you, Miss Hager. Now for labeling, um, I reckon we can label both of those points by adding two to the y values for each. So zero, is that at zero, negative one? Good. And one comma negative 2.9, because originally it was at negative 4.9, but since I shifted it up to, I added two to that number to get negative 2.9. Teamwork makes the dream work, because I was stuck on that math. Um, how about that domain and range, Miss Angelo? So again, our domain is going to be all real numbers, and our range is based on where our asymptote that is at. So our asymptote is at y is equal to 2. And notice that everything that's happening is below that asymptote. So y is going to be less than 2 for our range. Awesome. Great job, team. Hey, guys. Um, we are going to go ahead and press pause. And we're going to encourage you to try number 3 on your own. You can just check your work with ours. Try it. All right, looks good to me. So here's what Ms. Hager did. She put parentheses um, over the B part of it. The A was one. It's great labeling, Ms. Hager. Shout out to you. Thank um, you. And then check your key points with our key points. Check your shifts with our shifts. Careful how you say that. Domain is always all real numbers. Everybody knows that. And then your range, Y is greater than negative two. Just check your graph. Check what we did. I like it. You like it, Ms. Angelo? I like it. You like it, Ms. Hygra? Yes. I do want to point out the one tricky part is that my scale is going by one half here, so that when I shift it down two, so notice this point goes down two, so it goes down four boxes. Oh, got it. Okay. Excellent. Thanks, guys. Have a good one. Good night. Bye.